All right, let's say you bought yourself a nice high powered laser like this XTOOL D1 Pro 40 watt, and you wanna start a business. What are you gonna make? You're gonna make these? No. If you go to Etsy, you'll see millions of people selling those and you can't make any money. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a project that you can do where your business can succeed. So let's get started. Hey, it's Steve here, welcome back. Now the other day my XTOOL rep reached out to me and she said, hey, we're looking for some videos that show people taking an XTOOL D1 Pro 40 watt laser to create a business, build products, and sell them to make money. Now that seems like a simple idea and in this video I wanna show you what I did. Now of course I discounted the laser engraved coaster business and the reason's obvious. I went to Etsy, I searched for them, Etsy brings back 64 items on a page and after 40 pages I said this is crazy, there's just no money to be made here. And the reason for that is because literally every single person who buys a laser can make these. That's the cheapest diode laser to the most expensive CO2 laser, so everyone. And it's the, an easy place to start. Everybody starts there and then they'll start a business, they'll get discouraged because they're not actually selling any of these. Now you'll hear business people talk about barrier to entry and what that really means is how hard is it for someone else to do what you're already doing. Again, go back to the coaster business. It is trivial for someone else to do exactly the same coaster design, the same everything that you're doing and they're gonna kill you from a competitive perspective. So the way to solve that problem is to make it hard for someone to do what you're doing. Find the right equipment. So the XTOOL D1 Pro 40 watt is a good example. It's a higher end laser, it costs a bit more money but it can also do things that some of these other lasers can't do. And that includes any, certainly any diode laser, but also any CO2 laser, at least ones that mere mortals can afford. In this video, I'm gonna show you what the 40 watt D1 Pro can do that no other diode laser can do and what you can make. And I'll do it on the cheap. And that's the premise of this video from a business perspective. Now let's talk about the project. Now I recently found these bearing rings on Amazon and what they are is two aluminum concentric rings with ball bearings in between and they turn very freely so you can use these to make any kind of turntable. I thought I can make Lazy Susans with these things and I went to Etsy and I searched and it may not sound like it but the good news is there was only eight pages of these. And I took a look at the results and a lot of them are really obviously just packaged units from China. They're made of bamboo or acacia or other cheap woods and then somebody will take them and do some engraving. And that's fine, people will always want the lowest price. But I wanted to be able to start from certainly that, that market, but then move up market and make things that are really high end. Now, of course, we're gonna do a design, and here's it, here it is. I won't walk you through what I did here because honestly, I just laid out a bunch of stuff very quickly. It took me 10 minutes to make this. And uh, so the outer line, the outer circle is the cut line because I'm gonna make this entire thing out of a slab of wood stuck on the XTOOL D1 Pro 40 watt and it will do the cutting and the engraving at the same time. Put some profound text on the outside. That thicker black line is gonna be just a groove on the outside. Then I'm gonna engra engrave some kind of image in the center. I happen to find this, this rose that I had and it, it might look a little weird and I'll explain that in a second when we lay it out. All right, and here we are in Lightburn. I'll go through this really quickly, but uh, what I've done is color the, the specific elements of the image so that I can set some powers here. And the red line is a cut, and you can see, rather than try and brute force this with the 40 watt laser and get through in one pass, I decided to go a little bit quicker and use four passes. Uh, I don't like the charring result that you get if you're just powering through and uh, it creates all kinds of burning and it's just hard to work with. Uh, next is the image, and one thing you'll notice here, aside from the power and the, and the speed, is I've selected grayscale here rather than something like Stucky or Jarvis. So no dithering, this is true grayscale, which means it's a true engraving. And the reason this image looked funny originally is because it's actually a height map. So dark things are as deep as they can engrave, and light things are basically the surface material. So. Uh, when this is engraved for each of these petals, if you ran your finger across it, you'd feel a very distinct slope from the t this end of the petal down to the other end. So uh, that's why I chose it. And it's really to highlight what this D1 Pro 40 watt laser can do. Uh, the only other laser module I know of that can do uh, 
this kind of grayscale engraving is the Artur Laser Master 3, uh, but it's not nearly as powerful and it couldn't do the rest of this job. So, uh, so there we go. And then engraving is engraving and I'm doing the out outer ring and the text and that's it. What I'll do now is I'll set up some material. I'll show you what I did there and uh, then we'll send this over to the laser. Okay, let's talk a bit about material here. Now you could certainly use something like walnut or cherry and it would honestly cost you a fortune. So what I did was I found this pallet sitting over in the corner and I broke it apart. It's, it's not hardwood, it's really pine of some sort. And I broke out a few boards, cut them up to, to length. Uh, and then once I had them rough cut, you can see the edges are all rough. So I took them over to my jointer and uh, smooth them out and glued them up and what you get is a flat board and I found the center and that's the center I'm going to use when I do the laser engraving uh, because I want to do a center out engraving. So, uh, so that was it. That was the material setting and the total cost of this material it was absolutely zero. All right, and with the laser cutting done, we just have to find the center, draw a circle around the uh, hole diameter for the, the uh, bearing that we're trying to put in, uh, put the bearing down and, uh, you know, just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, and then all I did here was drill some pilot holes for the screws and uh, put the bearing down again and uh, thread, in, thread in the screws. There's four of them there. They're, these are half inch wood screws, so they're, they're readily available. Uh, you don't want to go too long because you'll punch through the board. And uh, there you go, you can see it slides really nicely. So that's the assembly. And no project is, is complete unless you put some finish on it. So uh, I just pulled some satin coat uh, polycrylic off my shelf and uh, put two coats on, uh, making sure I got into all of the, the dimples in the flower, as well as within all the, all the lettering. And two coats, maybe you sand in between if you really want a glass-like finish, and that's all there is to it. All right, now just a quick fly over here to appreciate the hard work, uh, at least that I put into this. And you can see it looks really nice, and it's pretty much ready to go here. Now you could call this finished and ship it the way it is, but I tend to be a little pickier. So what I wanted to do was take some black acrylic paint and fill in all the letters. I don't really like the bare wood in, in the engraving. So uh, all I did was, was blot it in there. You can be pretty messy here if you, if you need to, to make sure you get all the crevices filled. That two coats of polycrylic on the surface protects it from, from sticking. So you have some time to, to get it cleaned off. And the way you do that is I'll start with a, just a, a block with dry paper towel on it, uh, blot out the heavy stuff, and then I'll take another block uh, with paper towel and I'll, I'll wet the surface of the paper towel and just give this a couple of wipes uh, to get any excess material off the, off the surface. And there you go. And I'll just do the rest of it. And when you're done, it looks amazing and uh, you can see the the black lettering really makes it stand out and if we zoom in close here you can see the the finish uh, as it is and uh, this thing is ready to ship to somebody now what i did here was create a project that's actually kind of cool using the capabilities specifically of the xtool d1 pro 40 watt laser and those are, those are things like the ability to cut through thicker material without much trouble. If you could do this in a single pass, I chose to do multiple passes. Uh, also the ability to do proper grayscale engraving. And that's one that's very rare in most diode lasers. It's even, even CO2 lasers, sometimes they don't do this very well either. So if you look at the flower that I created here, you can see there's actual sloping in, in those cuts. So things aren't just darker, they're also deeper. And this is more of a CNC kind of function. And that's one of the things that makes this laser really unique. And if you have one, you can certainly build things that other people with diode lasers can't. My goal in this video was to show you that if you're actually building a laser business, you can buy the right equipment, something like the X-Tool D1 Pro 40 watt, 
and use it to make something that is both unique and valuable to customers, but also you can make it in a way using this laser that it, it will be very difficult for, for other people to follow you. And that's really important when it comes to selling higher, higher volumes and also higher profit. You can list this Lazy Susan on, on a place like Amazon or, or Etsy today, and you'll see if you go look in those places that these things typically sell for anywhere from $80 to $100. This one cost about $20 to make, so there's a pretty good profit margin there. Uh, with that, uh, I'll put a couple of videos up above and hopefully you'll go watch those and I'll see you over there. And uh, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.